We could comment hours and hours about the selection of the best continuous distribution to model the severity or impact of operational risks. The general practice is that you should find the distribution that best fits the historical data and apply some criterion of maximum likelihood or another one to select the best distribution among several. In 2001, the Basel Committee suggested the use of the log normal distribution, although there is a set of parametric distributions that can be valid for such an approximation. Some of them can be the Weibull, Gamma, Pareto, Gumbel, and Bear. There are statistical tests that allow validating hypothesis tests regarding these distributions. This is a field that we will not refer to here and that we will expand later in more advanced courses. The log normal distribution has multiple applications. I wouldn't be surprised if, in real life, it is used more often than the normal itself. The examples are plentiful. For example, as we have mentioned, the log normal distribution is quite common to model severities in the insurance industry. It describes variables that are highly skewed to the right, meaning that large values of x have much lower probabilities than values of x in the opposite direction. Log normal distributions describe products of other variables. By definition, a random variable x has a log normal distribution if the natural logarithm of x has a normal distribution. Like the normal distribution, the log normal requires two parameters, the mean mu and the standard deviation, sigma. The values of a variable with a log normal distribution extend infinitely in the right direction. However, a log normal distribution does not allow negative numbers. As this is an introductory and simple model, we are going to use this single distribution which, in turn, only requires two known and easily calculated parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. Now in the model, observe how the density function of the log normal distribution is displayed on cell B14 with mean equals 439 and standard deviation equals 508. Equals if error, log normal, B15, B16, 0. It extends asymmetrically to the right infinity with a minimum of 0. That is, many relatively small events and, with less and less frequency, some extreme events of positive value that tend to lengthen the right tail of the distribution, at least theoretically, to infinity. Obviously, the forms and shapes of the curve change as you modify the parameters. If we go back, for example, to the case of 2.1.2, counterfeiting for all units, we obtain a mean severity of $187 and a standard deviation of $95, the shape and magnitudes of the curve will change. What does remain intact and is desirable, is that the minimum is zero, there can be no negative severity events, the asymmetry is always positive to the right, that is, a few very extreme events will drag the mean to extreme values positive, and the curve extends to infinity. Also, notice how, in each recalculation of the model, either with the F9 key or with the manual recalculation button in the Excel formulas ribbon, different random numbers are generated for this function in turn than for the frequency. This is the power that DT Simulator has within Excel. DT Simulator, the toolbar that is positioned above Excel, is a set of macros that allow Monte Carlo simulation to be carried out on this tool. Monte Carlo simulation, in essence, means generating random numbers and converting them to frequency distributions. In our case, in Poisson distributions for frequency and log normals for severity. That is exactly what happens every time we type an F9 or recalculation in Excel. Random numbers are generated according to the parameters that we have specified for each of the distributions. If we carry out this process of generating recalculations with the random numbers generated by these functions many times, we can create a Monte Carlo simulation. That is, repeating the process of generating these random samples, called iterations, many times together forms what is called a Monte Carlo simulation. After having generated many iterations and having stored them, we will be able to summarize the results of our process and reach conclusions by interpreting these graphs.